Hey peeps, Jess here and today I am so excited to geek out with you about my new favorite festival, the Vancouver Hot Chocolate Festival. It's this whole month long thing from mid-January to Valentine's Day up in Vancouver, BC and about 30 restaurants have about a hundred hot chocolate options and you can pick and choose your way through all the awesomeness. And it's not just hot chocolate, but there's usually a treat, maybe a confection or a cookie or just something extra fun to make it even more special than just hot chocolate. Though the hot chocolates are nothing to sneeze at. So in this video, I wanted to share with you some of the ones that I got to try out that I really liked for the 2020 Hot Chocolate Festival and also some tips I learned along the way because there are some tips and tricks you will want for having the best time. So with that, let's dive in. So my favorites from the festival, well, three of them, I would go back and try everything if I could. First, Thomas Haas. So we got the Love is in the Air, which is a 49% milk chocolate with raspberry and lychee. And the description said it came with a little brownie, but it, it came with a brownie, a little chocolate covered heart brownie. And it came with this really neat dark chocolate cookie with these two gelées on top that were lychee flavored that kind of sunk almost immediately. I have no photos of this. I have my little cat ear shot and that's it. But it was really fun to eat. I didn't taste lychee as much as I would have liked, but the lychee jelly, oh my gosh, they were just so beautifully soft. I would go back just to have a regular hot chocolate in those jellies, but the whole experience was more fun with them together. I do wish my baton had not fallen because what I could taste of it in the hot chocolate was quite tasty, like a really nice dark fudgy cookie. Good stuff. Number two, Boku Bakery. We got the Surrealist, which was really cute. It was a almond cookie cup with a dark chocolate lining and it had almond white chocolate inside. And so as it warmed with the hot chocolate, the two mixed together and it was a very dense milk hot chocolate thing. It was more like drinking condensed milk, but it was a really fun experience just because you had this little cute cookie and it was just so fun to pour and it was lovely. The only challenge was you got to want to eat the cookie because it was a tasty cookie and then you would spill everywhere. It's still fun though. James, one of our friends who joined in, he picked up the chocolate playground, which was this nonsense. It was like retro ice cream sundae chaos with this really dark chocolate. It looked wonderful. I'm just not a big fan of banana and chocolate things in general, but it looked really cool. I would get it just for the cool factor and then share it with three people. Number three, last, certainly not least, the Mount Doom at Bell Cafe. It was a 70% Valrona Guanaja base for the drinking chocolate with chocolate whip and aerated chocolate chunks and a black chocolate macaron on top. And the drinking chocolate itself had guajillo chili. It was a little too spicy for me, so I was definitely like double fisting water and hot chocolate. It wasn't super hot, it was just that it was hot enough that you needed the balance. And they did say that you're able to get it metered and how spicy you want it. They're like, yeah, we need it Mount Doom, so it's gonna be spicy, but you can get it less spicy. And that's, that's nice. My actual favorite part though, wasn't even the drinking chocolate. It was the ridiculously wonderful chocolate whip on top. I wish I could describe better, just this dense, luscious, dark chocolate whip on top that was much denser than the hot chocolate actually. So yeah, I just wanted to scoop up the chocolate whip. Very good. So here are my tips and tricks. Number one, go and read the menu before you go. Not only is there a huge variety in menu options, but some stuff may only be available for one or two weeks of the whole month. So if you've got your eye on something very special, make sure it's going to be even available when you're in town. Number two, for the sake of your stomach, really only expect to cover three to four places in a day. More than that, and unless you're sharing a lot, like everyone's splitting one hot chocolate, you're gonna just fill up really fast. They're very filling hot chocolates. Number three, take a protein break. Your stomach will thank you, seriously. I don't know if I've said this enough times in general, but if you're doing stuff with a lot of dessert, eat some protein. I'm a big fan actually of going for steak, salmon, tofu, leafy greens, something, so you're not just eating chocolate all day. Number four, go with friends. It is so much more fun with friends just because you get to share the experience and at some places there are multiple hot chocolates so you'll get to see all the hot chocolates rather than just have 
the one. That being said, don't bring too many people. We had a group of six and we sort of took over a lot of the bakeries. Like Boku Bakery, we were kind of crowded into this one corner and it was awkward. Actually, my spouse ended up hiding in a corner because there wasn't enough room to have all six of us in there. <laughs> so I think like a group of two to four is a nice number just because most of these places can't seat more than like 12. So those are my tips and tricks for having the best time at the Vancouver Hot Chocolate Festival. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Are you going to be going? And if so, what hot chocolate are you getting? I want to hear all about it. And with that, I will catch you next time. Later.